Yo, welcome to Apprentice Marks. My name's John. One of the first things that I built way back when I started woodworking were these record boxes. They're basically just made out of some pine boards that I bought from the Home Depot. I, I box jointed them together with a box joint jig that I had purchased. Um, and I put this finish on them that frankly kind of sucks, but it's a product of the time. I wasn't very good at what I was doing yet. As you can see, the other problem with them is I've outgrown them. Uh, I've got way more records now than I did when I started, and there's no longer space for all the records in the boxes. So in this video, I'm going to take a stab at making some new record boxes, incorporating a lot of the skills that I've learned in the last year and a half of woodworking, and hopefully making something with a little more space so I can actually store my entire collection. I started out with a few boards of wood that I got from my dad's basement. Uh, this stuff is probably poplar, but maybe ash, and it's about five quarter. I use the jointer to get square corners, and then I use the planer to bring it all to thickness. Using the table saw, I cut the stock into inch and a half thick strips. After that, I reset the table saw to use the crosscut sled, where I took the strips that I cut in the previous step down to their final 13 inch length. Each one of these 13 inch strips forms the edge of a frame that will make up the end of a crate. After familiarizing myself with mortise and tenon joinery on my last project, I decided to give it a go here. So I cut the mortise with a quick and easy jig that rides on top of my existing fence, and I cut the tenons with a crosscut sled. It took me three tries to get the width of the tenon correct. I just kept sneaking up on it in small increments until they fit together perfectly. After cutting the mortise on one side of each frame edge and the tenon on the other, I could glue the 24 edge pieces together to form six frames. One of the frames will go on each end of the three record crates. The nice thing about building frames with mortise and tenon joints, as opposed to with miter corners, is that the frames come into square really easily. You just knock them together, apply some clamps, and you're done. Once the glue on all six frames dried, I took them over to the router table, where I used a chamfer bit to apply kind of an angled edge all the way around the inside and outside of every frame. Next, I put a riveting bit into the router and cut a quarter inch dado around the inside edge of all of the frames. I used a chisel to square out the corners of this dado. Pro tip, chisels are fucking dangerous. Be careful. After losing a few liters of blood, I figured it was a good time to break for lunch and replenish my nutrients. By this time, you may have noticed that the frames that form the ends of my record crates have big holes in the middle of them. The idea was to put some different material in the insides of those to provide some contrast and kind of break up the big edge. I bought this cheap wainscoting product from the Home Depot that I cut into 10 inch long strips and glued together to form panels that would fit inside of these holes. After the glue dried, I cut the panels to their final dimensions and put a rabbit around the outside edge. With the panels complete, I gave them a quick sanding and applied two coats of white bomb poly to protect them. By this time, I had completed all the pieces that formed the ends of my record crates, but I needed a way to attach those ends to one another. I bought some 1 by 8 clear poplar from the Home Depot and broke it down into strips. Each strip is an inch and a half wide and about a quarter of an inch thick. Because two of my boxes have an inside length of 13 inches and one has an inside length of 19 and a half inches, I cut 42 13 inch long strips and 21 19 and a half inch long strips. With all the pieces cut, it was time to assemble the crates. I clamped two of the frames perpendicular to my workbench and square to one another and glued and tacked strips on three of the sides using a 3 8 inch piece of lumber as a spacer. After the glue dried on all three crates, I gave them a thorough sanding, cleaned them off, and prepared them for staining with a Minwax product that's meant to stop stains from coming out blotchy. The crates were stained a deep red color, and after the stain sat for five minutes, I used a clean rag to wipe off the excess. I gotta say that out of all the projects that I've done that have involved staining wood, this one's come out the best. After letting the stain dry overnight, I carefully glued the pine panels into the dado that I had cut previously. At this point, everything was assembled, and the only thing left to do was to spray all three boxes down with a coat of clear finish. So, the record boxes are finished, and I've got all the old records sorted into the new crates. 
Uh, there's plenty of space to grow into these things, and actually they look really cool. If you'd like to see more stuff like this, please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and follow me over on Twitter at ApprenticeMarks. See you on the next one.